This is the album that I made to put inside the Christmas cheer box that I had made. I have a tutorial on that uh, real quick. It just it looks like this. It's got a camera on the front. Uh, and it's a chipboard box. So I wanted a book to put inside and so this is a folio that I put together using just paper, uh, artisan cardstock, uh, the Christmas cheer paper, and I also used craft text for the spines. So I just have a tie closure that comes up from the back. For the front cover, this is like the first time I have never decorated the front cover. <laughs> I left it open so there could be a picture and I thought that paper was super cute, but I uh, am going to keep this tag um, in the front as I tie it. So it's just got a cute front, but this is removable. So, and I could, you can end up putting a picture here. So when you open it up, it is a trifold. So there are three sections. Let's see if I can get it all to fit in here. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it's all the way open. This is a belly band and I just put a mat underneath of it. This goes up like so, and this is a magnetic closure so that it stays closed. And then when you open it, it opens up to the side here and I thought that would be a good place for some pictures. Below that, this is a magnetic closure also with one of the four by six cut aparts. As this comes down, there is one, two, three, four waterfall pages, then a pocket at the bottom with a couple things. I just let, used leftover paper and matted it on white. And then this was one of the cut aparts and I matted that one on black. And that comes back down. The middle section, the closure is just seam binding. It progressively gets larger with each page. And the last page, um, I just made a little pocket out of the cut apart, two white tags. This is a pocket and I included two mats in that pocket. And then just go ahead and tie that closed to keep it from flapping around. This side um, also has a belly band with a red mat underneath of it. And this is not actually just a page, this is an insert. So this comes out and there's room for pictures. And then in the pocket, I just put some of the leftover ephemera in a little baggie. This is a uh, pocket, it does have some thickness to it. So there's room for plenty of stuff in there if you wanna put extra pictures. And then this just slides right back in there. And that's uh, just for a picture there. You don't want a whole lot of bulk on that cover for when it's closed. And then again, just close that up. Put my tag there. Tie it like oh, for like a package. like so and that will fit inside of that camera box so if you're interested in making this little folio go ahead and keep watching uh, the tutorial will follow you'll want to get a little notebook and write down the measurements as we go and if you have questions uh, don't hesitate just put them down in the comment section and if you haven't yet please subscribe to my channel and i hope all of you have a great holiday Okay, it's time to make the folio. Um, I decided on a folio instead of an album to go inside of here. Now I'm probably gonna end up making two because I have two kids and so I would make one for each and maybe put pictures in um, that way, one for each kid. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I'm using then for a cover. Now I'm not gonna use chipboard, I'm just gonna use paper. Um, so here's what I'm gonna start with. Um, you're gonna wanna write down these measurements as we go. Um, I didn't have time to do the sticky notes that I normally do to put on, so have a notebook handy and then you can just write these down. So this is called Craft Text and it's kind of like a paper fabric and it doesn't rip, it, I mean it's super durable, it bends, um, but it's, it's almost like, it's kind of like a fabric. 
So this is what I'm going to use for my spine pieces. And so it will be able to roll and you'll be able to turn the pages, the covers easily. So I'm going to go that route. You can make a chipboard cover if you want and do that instead. Um, you can use regular paper if you want. It's totally up to you. This is just how I'm doing it. So this is one and a fourth across and eight inches tall. And you're going to need two of those. Okay, one and a fourth by eight, two of them. And that's for the spines. Now, you're going to need a front and back cover, and then you're going to have a flap. So you're going to need two pieces that measure nine by six. So they're nine tall. The book's going to be eight inches tall. So nine by six, two of those. And you're going to need two that are uh, eight by six. Okay. And one that is three and a half by eight. Okay, so hopefully you got that. So let's start with the small one because that's on top. Let's go ahead and place the three and a half inches across the top. Let me get my scoring tool that I like. I have so many to choose from here. Let's see. I want, uh, nope, not that one. There we go. Um, so with the three and a half inches across the top, go ahead and score at one half inch. Okay, put that to the side. The ones that measure six by eight get no scoring. Put those off to the side. The ones that measure six by nine, you're gonna place the nine inches across the top and you're gonna score at one half inch and then one half inch on the other side also. So you could do a half and eight and a half or just know that you do half on each end. Do that with both pieces. Nine inches across the top Score at one half and eight and a half, or I just turn it around and do one half again. Okay, so let's work with this uh, and get these put together, the pages, before we work with the spines. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and burnish, oops, sorry, I'm going to go ahead and burnish um, the score marks on the nine inch pieces. And I'm hoping, my goal is that this will be a fast folio so that if you're in a pinch or a bind, you can get something made that's nice, but get it done quickly. Okay, now let's take that three and a half inch piece and go ahead and burnish that on the score mark. So we're going to be combining the one piece that was nine inches and we scored it at half an inch on each and we're going to attach one of these six by eight inch pieces to the top. So you do like to, I like to eyeball it and see if I need to do any trimming and I actually, I might need to do a little bit. So what I'm going to do to make it a little bit easier is I'm going to miter the corners so that I don't see any overhang. So on the half inch, just take a slight snip at an angle on all four of those half inch sides. And then that's usually you're going to have better luck with not having any overhang showing. So let's see if that worked. It did on the top. And going to work on the bottom. Okay, now you have to decide if you like to attach by putting the six by eight on top so that you can see the ridge at the top, or do you want to tuck this under like so and have these glued to the top because this will be covered with paper and then you'll have a, you won't have any seam here. And I think that's actually what I'm going to do. So when you do that, you have to slightly trim so that there's no buckling of your paper. So I'm going to take my six by eight and I'm just going to trim a hair off. And when I say a hair, it was like an eighth of an inch. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to lay it inside of those half inch scores and just make sure that I can place the half inches on top without any buckling and I can. Okay. So then I'm going to put glue on the inside of the half inches and then I'm going to lay it down on top like so. Okay. So let me see if I have enough glue. I might have to go get some more. I keep it upstairs. It's cold in my basement. And so um, 
if you don't have the right temperature for your art glitter glue, it can get runny. And that's why the Country Craft Creations doesn't sell it in the winter because they don't want to make sure that you get a good product. Now, some places might sell it in the winter, but be very leery because you might get it and it's a runny mess. It still adheres. It's just messy to, okay, messy to work with. I have a feeling I'm going to have to get another bottle here. Okay, let's see if that did the trick. It did. Okay, so I'm just putting glue on the half inch strip. And I want to make sure that I just kind of bounce that so that the two sides are even. And then I'm going to bring that over. I'm going to have a dry wet wipe handy to get rid of any excess glue. And then I will do the other end also. Make sure that it lines up and it does. So I'm going to open up that flap, place glue on it. And make sure it's flat, like I said, you don't like any buckling. And then just bring that up and over and attach. Now when I make my book, I'm going to make sure that I have the nice part facing the front. I just like to work with it that way. Give it a good firm burnishing and do the same thing then for the second piece. We're going to go ahead and snip our corners at an angle of the half inch section so that there's no paper showing out the side when we attach the top piece. Now I'm going to have to do some trimming because if you don't, if you leave it eight inches, it will buckle and you don't want that. So I'm going to trim about an eighth of an inch off. Lay it down in between the folds here and make sure it's flat and it is. Okay. So put your adhesive on. Some people like to use score tape. I used to, but I use this more often than anything now. Again, you want to make sure that it lines up. Now, I wonder if I'm going to see, yeah, I might have to do a little bit of trimming on this one when I am done, and I'll show you what I mean here in a second. So now I'm going to attach the other half inch piece. Make sure it's flat, bring it over. So when I look at this, I just want, I see just a little bit, I don't even know if I can show it to you. There's just a little bit where it doesn't line up and I can see just a hair of paper that I want to trim because I don't want, I like it to be nice and neat. And I mean just a hair, like not, ooh, barely. Okay, so let me make sure that those are going to be the same. So now I'm going to have to do that on the other one too. Just a hair. Even though this one's good, i got to do it the same. I don't know if I did it enough. Yeah, I can live with it. Okay. So what we're going to do now is take the three and a half inch piece, miter the half inch at an angle here. And what we're going to end up doing is placing that on the inside of that opening so that this will be a front flap. Okay. This will be a front. This is the, um, front of the book. So I have this tucked inside and you want it in as far as it will go and I'm going to put glue first on the inside of the half inch piece, not the outside. Let's 
slide it in. Make sure it can, comes up and o or over nice and neatly and lines up top and bottom. Okay. And then burnish. And now you're gonna to wanna to put glue inside to seal this closed. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a line of glue inside. And I'm trying to get it on the half inch. It may not be exactly perfect. Just to seal it shut. All right, so now we're going to need to be attaching the binding. And notice that I am using red and white. I thought that was festive. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna end up scoring this and sliding it in here to attach. Um, let's see. If I want, let's see. I wanted it to be this way. So let me do some thinking here just a second. I'm, I'm making it as I go. So sometimes I got to stop and think. Okay, I figured everything out. All right, so the reason why I was having issues is because I told you to make two of these and you actually need three. Sorry about that. So you need um, another one that is nine inches tall by six inches wide and one more that is uh, eight inches long and six inches wide and we're doing the same exact thing. So um, there's our third one. So I apologize for that. So now um, I'm using the uh, Craft Tex, and I got this at a uh, craft store, and I measured one, uh, excuse me, two and a fourth by eight. You're going to place it on your scoreboard, and you could use regular paper, you could whatever you want. Um, and I scored at one half. I turned it around and did one half. And then I scored at a fourth of an inch in between. So once I did the one half on both ends, I went um, from the one half, I went three fourths, one, one and a fourth, one and a half. Okay. So let me say that again. If you do it all the way across without going to the half inch sides first, place your two and a fourth at the top, score at one half, score at th three fourths, score at one. Score at one and a fourth, score at one and a half, and then you're going to score at one and three fourths. That will give you then the two half inch sides at the end. Now those score marks in the middle are to help you bend your uh, spine so that it curves and it's easier to work with your book. Okay, so it just gives it some curve. So then you're going to miter the half inch uh, pieces at the end here. Miter half here, half, oopsie, and half so that you have the four mitered corners. Okay, so let's take one of our pages, and what we're going to do is we're going to slide that one half inch piece in and make sure it fits nice if, in case you have to trim just a hair off the top. and you want it to slide inside and you're going to glue that one half inch piece inside of that page. So I'm going to put glue on both sides of my half inch Glue is driving me crazy. I need a new one. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do it glue on the outside of that half inch. Okay. 
and slide it in and make sure it goes to the very end of that score at the half inch. Half, half, and I think that's going to do it. And then press down and it glues real nice. The art glitter glue works really well on the craft text. Okay, so this is actually our centerpiece. And now I'm going to attach the right hand side the same way. So I'm going to place glue on the half inch strip, both the front and the back, and then I'm going to slide it in. Now make sure it lines up okay, because you might have to do a little bit of trimming. See, I'm, I'm going to have to trim this part just a little bit. Now let's see if it goes in. Yep, that's all I needed. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit down here though too. So always do a dry fit first when you're doing this kind of a spine. Alright, so that's what it'll look like. Go ahead and I'm going to put the glue on both the inside and outside of that half inch. And I do get pretty close to that score mark. Turn it over. I'm going to do the same thing. Burnish that down real good. So that's our right hand side, right, center, and now we need to detach one more. I'll flip it over and do it on this side too. I got some glue coming out, I want to get rid of that. Okay, and now the last one. So I had glued this on and I don't like that because it's going to go on the inside, but I don't really have a choice. Yeah, I wanted the flap. I should have actually glued the flap on the other, so with what I had in mind, but I'm just going to have to use it the way it is. I'll, uh, I'll do something with this here in a second. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. I'm thinking out loud. Uh, I already did my scoring. I've already done my burnishing. I did my mitering on the four corners and now I'm going to attach this one half inch strip inside of this open piece. Okay and then we're going to attach the front page or the front cover. Okay because I don't like the flap the way I glued it uh, I'm going to go ahead and make this my right hand page. If you want, you can go ahead and do that on the left and then just have the flap on the inside. Um, but I think I want my, I'm going to attach it on the right. Okay. So when I attach the spine, um, I'll have this, yep, this would now be my right. Sorry I sound random, but I'm one of those people who design as I go. There are a lot of people who, they have everything mapped out, drawn, all the measurements, and then they start, mm, not me. I just go design as I go. So, okay. So now I'm going to attach this last piece, but now it's going to be my right-hand side. Yep, I like that better. Okay. So, last step here with the cover. I did a dry fit to make sure it fit and didn't have to do any more trimming. I'm putting my art glitter glue on pretty close to that score mark so that it 
slides in and stops where it needs to. And I'm going to do it on the opposite side too. And I err on the side of too much glue when it comes to the spine. Okay. All right, I'm going to slide that in. I'm going to turn it just so it's a little bit easier for me to see. And I want to stop at the one inch, or the half inch mark. There's that one and that one. And perfect. Press down. So now I have it that this will fold in and this will fold out on top, okay? And so now we still have this open and I have to decide on what kind of closure I want. Do I want a magnet? Do I want um, seam binding? I'm going to leave this open until I decide. So what I'm going to do is work on the left hand side and I'm going to have a waterfall. Okay, for the waterfall, you're going to need four pieces. Now, originally I had cut it at six, but that was just a hair too big. So you might want to kind of play it by ear with your cover. But I ended up going about five and seven eighths across and four and a half long. And I did that on all four pieces. So cut out four, start at six, and then if you're six o'clock, or six o'clock, <laughs> if six inches works for you, leave it that way, but mine ended up being closer to five and seven eighths, okay? So you can always trim it if you need to. Um, for those four pieces, you're gonna score them all the same. So put the four and a half inches across the top and score at one half, okay? Do that to all four pieces. The other piece that you're gonna need measures six and seven eighths. You might wanna do seven, depending on what you ended up doing for your front, uh, by True. what was that by three okay so three inches tall and either seven across or six and seven eighths so on this one it's a pocket so you place the six and seven eighths or the seven inches whatever across the top score it one half turn it once score it a half turn it one more time score it a half okay so that's what you do with all pockets well, the majority of them anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and burnish my score marks on the pocket and on the waterfall pieces. This is the pocket. So when you make a pocket, I am going to go ahead and miter at the top on the half inch pieces on sides. And on this one, you want to take out the bulk. So there's a square in the corner where the lines intersect. I'm going to take out that square, but I'm going to do it at an angle. So I'm going to angle up and angle over. So this is what it looks like when you cut out that square. Okay, it's angled. Do that to both of the squares on the corner. When you are working with waterfalls, you do not miter the corners. So once you burnish your half inch, do not do any cutting. Okay. So I'm going to place my pocket first at the bottom. That's going to go all the way to the bottom. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put glue on the three sides.
Okay. And go ahead and lay that down, like I said, to the very bottom. And I'm going to burnish that on there and let it dry. Before I put on the waterfall, I think I want a flap to go over the whole thing. Yes, I do. So uh, you're going to need a piece that measures eight and a half, eight and three fourths, and mine's going to be five and seven eighths across. Okay, you might need six. So let's go ahead and start with six, and we're going to do eight and three-fourths tall and that will be our top flap so you're going to place the eight and three-fourths inches across the top of your scoreboard you're going to score at one half and at three-fourths okay that's one half and at three-fourths now you do miter that one half inch not the one-fourth part but the half inch miter at an angle on each side you're going to place glue only on the half inch strip and then we're going to glue it to the top of our page here and so there's a half inch or excuse me a one fourth inch gusset okay so i'm going to turn this sideways it's easier for me to work with it that way and the glue And I want to make sure that when I attach this, that's what I'm going to put it that way, uh, when I attach this, that it lines up neatly on side to side and top to bottom here. Make sure it covers that pocket right. Go ahead and open it and burnish. is our top flap and then we'll have a waterfall we're going to use a cut apart to keep the waterfall down in case you're curious now I'm trying to decide if I want something on here um, I think I do uh, yeah I do I'm gonna um, cut an eight by six or eight and five and seven eighths no six and a half by eight yep let's do six and a half by eight and that'll be a side so that when we open there'll be a side flap also six and a half by eight with the six and a half across the top um, i trimmed mine a little bit um, because my pages i ended up doing five and seven eighths i'm going to score at one half I'm going to go ahead and miter and now you're going to have to do some checking and I know people get frustrated sometimes when I say that because it's not always a perfect measurement but when you attach this when you attach this you don't want it to go over that score mark down here so you might have to adjust a little bit of so that it's doesn't it's not too long okay now you're going to see that i have a little bit of space over here and that's okay and i'm going to put a closure on there so let me go ahead um let's go ahead and attach this you can have it open to the left or to the right it's up to you and i have mine sideways and i'm going to line it up with the top and on the side and make sure it does not go over this first score mark then Okay, so I can go ahead and attach mine. Mine fits okay. Top and on the 
this side. And it does not go over. Go ahead and open it up and burnish. So we want a closure so that this doesn't flap around all over the place. So I'm going to cut, I have a one and three fourths inch strip. You can do it as long as you want. Uh, it's whatever you prefer. Mine is going to be mm, about four and a half inches long and then we're going to score at a half. So mine's four inches across, or four, excuse me, four and a half by one and three fourths, and I'm going to score at one half. We're going to, and I'm going to use magnets. And I'm just going to attach that like so. So I'm going to eyeball it and find the middle. So I'm going to put, you don't have to miter these because it's not at the end of your paper. It's going to be centered in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and add my glue to the half inch. I'm going to turn mine so I can see where I want to put it. So I'm going to lift up this flap. And about halfway is about right here. And it goes all the way to the edge. Okay. And then I'm going to leave myself a note not to put any pattern paper on here until I put a magnet. So I'm going to make a little mark that I'm going to put a magnet here. So I'm just going to put a little X with my pen so I don't forget. And I'm going to put a little X right here so I know that there will be the other side of the magnet there. Okay, so I do that as a reminder so I don't accidentally pattern paper before I should. Okay, and then that will go down like so. All right, so we are ready for the waterfall. We have our four pieces already made. We have that little one fourth inch gusset so that shouldn't be a problem with any buckling of the paper. And I'm going to bump my book up against my scoreboard I'm going to go ahead and place my glue on the half inch strip and go all the way to the edge and don't go over that score mark make sure it's lined up on both sides and go ahead and burnish that down. And now you keep that lifted up and you're going to attach the next one so that it butts up against that half inch that's glued down. Make sure that it lines up on both sides. Use your scoreboard. Furnish it. Two more.
I think I'm just going to do three, actually. Or do I want a fourth one? Let me see. So if I leave it at three, I can place a cut apart here to keep it closed. If I place another one, uh, maybe I still can. Let's see. Uh, my pocket would be a little bit too tall. So I'm going to stop at three. You can go ahead and do the fourth one if you want. And then have some sort of closure. But I'm stopping at three. Okay, and I'm going to remember that you're going to have a closure like so. It's just going to be a piece of paper, or uh, cut apart. Yep, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so if you want four, go ahead and do four. But then this is what happens. Unless you have a shorter pocket, it covers the pocket, and you would have to do some sort of closure, which I guess I could. See, this is me thinking out loud, people. I don't plan ahead. Um, uh, do I want four? Why not? Let's do four. I cut four, right? the last one all right so you can either do another one like this as a closure you can uh, glue seam binding here and here and to have a tie closure I'm gonna go ahead and do a Another one and three fourths inch piece. Yeah, yep. So I cut a one and three fourths. And by six, I'm going to score it one half. center it on top of that pocket so that it's is centered on my paper my waterfall and then I will be putting magnets okay so let's go ahead and put glue on the half inch strip go ahead and center it Good. And now once again, I'm going to give myself a little reminder so I don't cover the paper with um, cover it with paper before I do the magnet. So I'm going to put a little X here and an X on the back of the closure. Okay. All right. So we are done with the left hand side. I'm going to move on to the center part right now. There's going to be a long pocket. Um, that you can tuck stuff in so it'll be closed on the left and open on the right so you're um, I'm using a piece that is now I'm just using scraps so all the measurements I'm giving you are just based off of what leftover papers I have so this is a five and a half by nine and we're gonna score it um, on at half an inch on three sides so we'll score uh, on the long side half on each end and then on the short side a half so that's gonna be a long pocket here and then I'm going to have some flaps over here that open up and they're different sizes. So the first one is, this one is six by eight. The next one is five by seven and the next one's four by six. And we're going to just score all of these at half, uh, a half an inch. So let's kind of take a pocket first. Now, because I don't want to have to use another magnet, I am going to use seam binding. And to save seam binding, if you want, you can just glue a piece here and glue a piece here so that it will tie in the center. I have plenty of seam binding, so I'm just going to lay it across the center like so, and then I'll build on top of it. So I'm going to go ahead and put some glue down. And it will... Um, 
Do I want to do it all the way through? Yeah, I do. Okay, so I'm just going to eyeball the center of where I want the bow to be. I still haven't gotten new glue yet. Clean that out. All right, so I'm just going to find the center of my seam binding and I'll lay that down. Okay, let that dry for a little bit while we're working on the pocket. All right, so this is our five and a half by nine. And we're going to go ahead and um, right now I have it on the short side. So five and a half is across the top. Score it one half. Turn it so that the long side is across the top. Score it one half on each end. And while we're, we're scoring, we'll go ahead and do the other pieces. So again, it was six by eight, five by seven, four by six. And on the short side of all of them, you're just going to score at half. Five by seven. And then the last one, the six by eight. Okay, so now I can bring my mat back. And I'll go ahead and prepare the pocket first. So I'm going to go ahead and burnish on my score marks. And before I do too much, I'm going to go ahead and lay it on my book to make sure that I don't need to do any trimming. So I'm going to do a dry fit just to see if lengthwise if it's the right and oh it is perfect okay so let's prepare our pocket by cutting or mitering the top and cut out the corners at an angle now i'm going to put a thumb hole in but i'm going to um Do I want to do it now? I think I'll wait until I have the pattern paper on. So maybe I should put pattern paper on this first so I can, so I don't forget to put that thumb hole. So let me do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish burnishing the other papers. So the longest one, the one that was six by eight, when we burnish that one, we are going to miter that one, but not the other two. The other two we don't need to because it's not going to go from top to bottom. It'll be centered and so you won't see those tabs coming out up the side. So. Okay, so these are the doors. Let's go ahead and work with these before I put the pattern paper on. So if I, I have my half inch wrapped behind and I know that this is one inch shorter, so I'm going to glue it at the half, I'm going to go up a half an inch or you can say I'm going to come down a half an inch and I'm just going to use my scoreboard as a guide. So I'm going to go ahead and just glue that on top of that first flap. And I'm actually going to turn my scoreboard sideways. Okay, and place it at the eight and a, or seven and a half inch mark. burnish that real well we want it to lay flat 
And now the last one, again, I'm going to place this on the scoreboard. And I want to go, this is at seven and a half. Oh, you can't see. <laughs> Um, this is at seven and a half, the top one, so I'm going to put this at seven so that I can get that lined up right. Push that down. And again, burnish that so it just lays as flat as it can go. And then we'll be attaching this on the right hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and put pattern paper on here. So the pocket is eight inches now, uh, now that we did the half inch scores. So my paper will be seven and five eighths. And this is, huh, this is, when I folded it, mine, mine's down to about five and one eighth. So I wonder if mine was a little bit longer than five and a half. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to go to five. So I'm going to make mine five by seven and seven eighths, and then I'll um, attach it to the book. So I have this um, covered now, and so I'm just going to use a circle punch, and I'm going to eyeball and find the center, and I'm going to cut out a thumb hole. Does that look about right? Okay, so now it'll be easier to take get things in and out of that. And so now we can glue, huh, something's not in the center, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put glue on the three sides. And when we lay it down, you just want to make sure you don't go over into the spine onto your craft text. You want to make sure that you can uh, you don't interfere with that spine at all okay my hands are sticky sure it's attached real well. So then we're going to attach our little layered booklet on this side. And we want to make sure that it's lining up top to bottom. And then that'll tie in the middle. So we just need to put glue on that half inch strip. And then we can put the pattern paper on later on this one. And I'm going to turn it sideways so that I can make sure I am putting this, lining it up all right. Don't want to go into the spine, top and bottom. There we go. So you should still have room to be able to get into that pocket. I'll probably have to trim the seam binding, but I don't want those doors flapping around, so I'm going to go ahead and tie that now. 
Yeah, I totally have to do that. And so let's take a look at where we're at. So we still have plenty of room. So now it's just a matter of deciding what to put here and what to do with this flap. So I might end up putting another paper, like a cut apart across here, but I need to decide what I want to do here. So let me think and get my paper ready. So I decided I don't really like this flap. So I'm going to make it into a um, pocket, but it'll be an accordion pocket. So there's room to put things in. So you're going to need two pieces that measure um, two inches by two and seven eighths because this is three inches and you have to cut it a little bit shorter. Otherwise you'll be able to see it off the top and we don't want that. So I went two and seven eighths long. As I have been decorating this book, um, I've decided that um, I want a belly band here. And on this uh, insert that goes there, I'm a, I want a belly band on top of the front cover also. So just measure the length of your paper and we're going to add an inch. So mine measured, uh, I'd say it's eight. Let me double check. I'll give you the wrong one. Uh, seven and seven eighths. And so your paper would be eight and seven eighths. So I made one eight and seven eighths and I made my belly band two inches across. And then I made this one two inches across. My insert is about, mine's eight, or excuse me, seven and seven eighths. So this will be eight and seven eighths. And I did two inches across on that one too. So when you do your belly band, you just um, do a half inch on each side. So you put the long end up against your, um, at the top. And you're going to score it half inch on each end. Go ahead and burnish the ends. And then I always like to do, you gotta double check to make sure it's the right height, make any adjustments as needed. But you just glue it to the very top and the very bottom. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. And then you're going to glue it onto the center. And then you'll put your pattern paper underneath. Same here. We're going to go ahead and score at one half on each end. So an inch larger than the size of your insert. Go ahead and burnish the ends. And I want to make sure that this one is the right length. So this is my insert. This one, yeah, that looks about right too. All right, so you're just gonna glue that down and then you'll have a place to kind of tuck things um, and add some more decoration.